Hello everyone, this hour on Verbling, the next in my great short story series. We're on short story 20. This is actually part two of short story 20, where we're going to look at Report on the Shadow Industry by Peter Carrier. It's so short, I suggest we read it once again, because it's only a page, and launch into a deep discussion of what it means, who the shadow industry is, and also the English that's used. Of course, it's an English class. So that's a little bit about the class. Here's a bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up, which means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking, so we can keep the classroom quiet. Tune in to the new vocabulary words you're learning when you are speaking, so I can give you feedback and correction. And finally, open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn, and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. Here, on the link, you'll see Report on the Shadow Industry. So when you click on that link, you'll open up the story, and if you don't have the link in front of you, you should because it's in class material, but if you don't see it, I will give you the link in the chat window as well. There you go. And I'll put it in the group chat inside the Hangout. Sometimes it's difficult to find. So there you go. Okay. So click on that and open it. Let's say a quick hello to Alex before we begin. Hello, Alex. How are you? Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Very good. Where are you from, Alex? I'm from Ukraine. From Ukraine. Okay, nice to have you. Alex, have you been in my class before? No, it's my first time. Okay, because I didn't recognize your picture. <laughs> so I thought maybe I didn't know you, and I don't. Uh, all right, so listen, Alex. Here's the plan. This is a really short story, so what we're going to basically do is read it once, and uh, people who have been in the class before, if they join us, um, then they'll join us for the discussion. But it's just a few paragraphs, okay? I'm going to skip all of the activities that you see because I want us to just go through the story one time and make sure it's clear. And then we'll go, we'll focus more on the discussion at the end. But you can ask me questions at any point if there's vocabulary that you don't understand or anything like that. Okay? Sounds all right? Okay. Okay. So, you can open this or just follow along on screen. Uh, by the way, you've got some links there to other um, articles that might help you understand the story, also to tell you more about the author. You've got links to the different parts of the story. Well, if you just go to the next page after the warm-up, so this is page four, the story actually begins. Okay, so we'll read this together. Uh, I'll do a paragraph, you do a paragraph, and so on. It's about eight, nine paragraphs total. Okay, so I'll start and then I'll pass it over to you. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. <clears throat> My friend S went to live in America ten years ago, and I still have the letter he wrote me when he first arrived, wherein he describes the shadow factories that were springing up on the West Coast and the effects they were having on that society. Okay? You take it over for the next paragraph, Alex, and then Obeid, you're going to join in on the third paragraph, okay? Go ahead, Alex. You see people in dark glasses wandering around the supermarket at 2 a.m. There are great boxes all along uh, the aisles. Uh, the aisles? Aisles? aisles. Uh, some as expensive as $50, but most of them are only five. There is always music, yes? Mu yeah, Muzak. Muzak. Actually, I guess, I guess we say Muzak, yeah, Muzak, which is elevator music. In other words, cheap music, not from anyone famous, easy listening. <laughs> 
okay. <clears throat> so uh, it gives me uh, the shirt uh, more than the shadows. The people don't look at one another. They come to browse through the boxes of shadows, although uh, the packets give no indication of what's inside. It really depresses me to think of people going out and two in the morning because they need to try their luck with shadow. Last week I was in the supermarket near uh, Topanga uh, and I saw an old man tear the end of the uh, of a shadow box. He was arrested almost immediately. Very good. We're going to be talking about this in just a minute, okay? But if there's any questions about vocabulary, just ask. Uh, Obeyed, would you like to read the next paragraph, paragraph three? Yes, teacher. Number Go three. for it. Yeah. Okay, I'm number three. I visited my mother. What? 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 what, what? I visited my mother. No, no. Here, a strange letter. Okay. Yeah, complete. We are. Um, yeah, just. Uh, a strange letter, ten years ago, but I accurately. 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 Wait, wait. Slow down. Slow down. Accurately. 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 Good. Now, yes. Good. Describes things that have signs become common in the in this country. Yesterday, I drove in from the airport past Shadow Factory. After Shadow Factory, large fig figless building. Faceless. Face this face this building gleaming gleaming in the, gleaming in the sun their secret crowded by ex blue policemen ex policemen with Alistan dots Alistan oh wait a second Alsatian Alsatian right when you see T-I in an English word, it's pronounced like a sh, like in the word nation. It's T-I-O-N, nation. So this is, exactly, so this is Alsatian. With Alsatian dots. Very good. So, <clears throat> let's just make sure we understand what's going on so far in the story. Uh, so you were the first one in here, Alex. Uh, does this seem like a realistic story, or does it seem like a surrealistic story? Does it seem like surrealism or realism, in your opinion? It's a story about some problems with uh, shadow industry. <laughs> what is the shadow industry? What do you think? Uh, what I think uh, it's some uh, illegal uh, actions. Some kind of illegal actions, okay. Yes, some frauds, uh, and um, if you, you do it, uh, you have uh, opportunity to have uh, troubles uh, and uh, uh, to get into prison. To go to, 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 go to, to, prison. Go to, go. to prison. To go to prison, right. Prison. Well, let me just say one thing. Look at the paragraph that you read. One second. Uh -huh. look, look at this. Look at the first sentence here. You see people in dark glasses wandering around the supermarket at 2 a.m. There are great boxes along the aisles. Some $50, some are 5 There's always Muzak, right? People looking at it. It sounds like they're buying the shadow boxes inside a supermarket. So if it was illegal, why would they sell them? Do you see what I'm saying? It seems like they are legal. They come to browse through the boxes of shadows. Do you see that sentence in blue? Yes, yes. Uh, it seems like illegal, but uh, it's not true. <laughs> no, no, but I'm saying maybe it is legal. Maybe it's because it's legal to buy, but an old man tears off the end of the shadow box and he was arrested immediately. If you're arrested, you go to jail. Usually, you go to jail. So it seems like some contradiction. You can buy shadow boxes, whatever that means. You can buy it in a supermarket, 
But if you try to open it outside in public, you get arrested. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Very strange. Very strange. Um, and uh, and obey it. Um, in your paragraph, it talks about a strange letter ten years ago that accurately describes scenes that have become common in this country. So, I just want to point out that the very first paragraph said, my friend S went to live in America ten years ago. So, the, so the, the narrator does not live in America. But, a strange letter ten years ago arrived and it accurately, accurately described the scenes that are common in this country. So, what happened in America is now happening in this country, wherever this country is. Just to make sure that's clear. So w this story does not take place in America, but he's describing something that happens in America. All right, we're going to keep reading because it's really short. Again, if there's any questions about vocabulary or any questions, just ask, and we'll discuss at the end. So, Vitor, why don't you take paragraph four at the bottom of the page for us? Okay. Yes. Okay. By the way, hello. Hello. <coughs> Uh, the shadow uh, fac uh, factories uh, have uh, hook, uh, chimneys, huge, huge uh, chimneys that reach for into the sky. Uh, sky. The chimneys which blow forth uh, smoke of different, brilliant colors. It is sad, uh, sad uh, by some of my more uh, uh, cynical. cynical friends that the smoke has nothing to do with any manufacturing process and is m merely a tr trick. Fake uh, evidence that technological uh, miracles are being Performed with, within the factories. The popular belief is that. Uh, Whoops! Sorry. Can you oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Uh, yes, here. The smoke. It oh, takes yes. a second. There you go. The, the smoke. Uh, some, sometimes. Contain the mo most uh, powerful shadow shadows of all, those that are too large and powerful to be packaged. Package. Good, that's right. It's, uh, it's, it is a common uh, sight uh, to see old women standing for how hours uh, outside the factories strange into the smoke. staring wait staring uh, st staring into the smoke okay so now we've got a situation where you can buy shadows and boxes in a supermarket but you get arrested if you open them and then outside old women are staring into the smoke from the shadow factories why are they staring into the smoke, Victor? Do you have any idea? What would you guess? Uh, staring. Uh, can you remind me what uh, staring Star means? Staring means to look without turning away, to look without closing your eyes. Just keep looking and looking and looking. Oh. So if you stare too long at someone, right, they think that there's a problem. <laughs> if you're staring at someone, it's strange. Normally, if you see a stranger, you look away. You see, you, you make eye contact, but then you look away. If you look too long, it means that you know someone, or that there's that you want something, right? It's so. Here, they're staring into the smoke from the chimneys of the factories. Any idea why they would do that? Uh, or did you miss the beginning maybe, of the story? Maybe she wants. Uh, to uh, she to or they uh, they <laughs> they want they. to uh, steal something I don't know but the, no no they're staring into the smoke of the factories of the factories 
So there's a factory with chimneys and smoke coming out of the top. We don't know what the factory produces, but it's a shadow factory. So we don't really understand what's happening inside the factory, but all this smoke is coming out, and they're staring up at the sky at the smoke. Seems a little strange, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> I <heard all> <laughs> do you go out? Do you go out to the to the outskirts of the city and stare at factories for hours and hours? Probably not, right? No. <laughs> no. So obviously something is a little bit odd in the story. All right, um, Just, uh, Alec. Maybe we we can we can ask the security of uh, on the stand or front of the factories. Maybe he answer about what what happened inside these factories. Is that right? If you talk to the the security person, yeah. yeah but it sounds like it's a big secret. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds like it's a very big secret what's actually going on. Uh, Okay, as I said, it's a very short story, so we're going to keep reading, and then we'll we'll have a discussion more at the end. I'm going to skip these questions too, because I think I don't want to run out of time. So, Alex, you're going to we're back to you for the this paragraph, which says there are. Um, <clears throat> there are a few uh, who say the smoke is dangerous because it, of um. Sar Gone Nasik. I don't know. <laughs> car. Car. Car Sigone. Carcinogenic. Carcinogenic. Chemicals. Yes. Yes. Chemicals used in the uh, manufacture uh, of shadows. Others argue uh, that the shadow is a natural product. Uh, and by its very nature, uh, chemically pure. Uh, they point uh, to the advantages of the smoke, uh, the beautifully colored um, patterns uh, in the clouds, which serve as a reminder of the happiness to be obtained uh, from a fully released shadow. Realized. They may realized. Realized. Realized mm -hmm. shadow. Uh, there may be some merit or merit. Good. Merit. Merit. Uh, merit in this last uh, argument. Uh, for on cloudy days, uh, the skies above our city are uh, one draw sight, full of blues um, and uh, vermil lines and brilliant Vermilion. greens. Vermilion. Uh, yeah. And uh, brilliant greens uh, which pick out strange patterns and shapes in the cloud. In the clouds, uh, others say the clouds now contain the dreadful beauty of the um, apo um, apocalypse. 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 What is what is apocalypse? What do you think that is, Alex? Does that uh, sound familiar? Uh, yes, uh, apocalypse um, means uh, like. Uh, as a huge end uh, of our world. Uh, exactly. It means the end of the world, the apocalypse. And if you say something is apocalyptic, it means it's going to the world will end in a dramatic way. Fire shall rain down from the heavens, the seas shall boil. So it's not just the end, it's the end in a very, very dramatic way. Hollywood kind of way. <laughs> so, how, how, if you had to picture the sky above the shadow factories, how would it look to you, Alex? Would it look nice and clean and blue? How would it look to you if you had to picture the sky above the factories? Well, if I looked <coughs> this um, picture. I would think that uh, uh, it's really an um, end of our life, and uh, uh, it's it's a terrible um, imagine. What would you What would you actually see in the sky? Um, dark uh, blue, maybe red uh, clouds. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And um, maybe dirty air. 
Exactly. So you see all this pollution, in other words. Yes, yes. You see all this pollution. The pollution, but yes. Some, but some people find it very beautiful <laughs> because of the colors in the polluted clouds. Others yeah. say it's, maybe it's color the dreadful is, beauty. Yes, maybe Go color ahead. is funny, but uh, <laughs> if we know um, yeah, there's a reason of this color. Exactly. <laughs> If you know why they're the color, that particular color, because of the pollution, you won't find it quite so beautiful, perhaps. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to move on to part two of the story. There's five parts. They're all about a paragraph or two. So, so far, we've gotten this, uh, this uh, letter from a friend who moved to America who describes the situation with the shadow boxes and shadow factories. Let's see what happens in part two. Oh, we lost Obeid. I was just about to call on Obeid and he disappeared. I can't believe it. Okay, Obeid. I hope you come back. Victor, you're going to pick up on part two for us. <coughs> okay, the shadows are uh, packaged in large, uh, lavish boxes uh, which are printed with. Uh, abstract uh, designs in uh, many colors. The the barrier uh, This is this is a French word but that we use, but it's it, you can say it in English. Bureau, bureau. The, the bureau of statis, statistics uh, revi uh, reveals uh, that the average Householders spends 25 percent of his income on those expensive goods, goods, and that this per percentage in increases as the income uh, decreases. Take a minute and make sure that that's clear. What what goes down? as the income goes up, <laughs> in other words. Uh, or as the, income, as the income goes down, let's put it that way, as the income goes down, as the money you receive goes down, what goes up? Is that clear, Victor? Uh, not, no, not all. What do, not they spend, what do people spend their money on? Uh, what does lavish mean? That's the question. Uh, do you know what lav yeah, do you know what no. that means? Lavish no. means decorated, like like really ornate, decorated, fancy, fancy boxes, decorated uh. boxes. So what do people spend their money on, Alex? What do people spend their money on, in other words? Uh, people spend money uh, for decorating and um, and hiding uh, uh, something in these boxes. Uh, what, uh, show me where it says that they're hiding something in the boxes. Where does it say that? <laughs> I don't see that. It's a good it's a good guess, but I don't see that in the text. Um, just my opinion. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but before you give your opinion, you've got to find evidence. Here's what I would say. The Bureau, the Bureau of Statistics reveals that the average householder spends 25% of his income, that's the money he gets from work, on these goods. What does these goods refer to? Victor, Alex, what does these uh, goods refer to? What does it refer to in that paragraph? Is it clear or not clear? Uh, no, not, not clear. Okay, the goods. Goods is anything you buy, right? Yes. If you buy something, yeah. it's a good. So the goods in this paragraph are the lavish boxes. Mm -hmm. And what's in the lavish boxes? We know from part one, it's shadows. So these are apparently boxes of shadows. Whatever that means, maybe it's literal. Literally, boxes of shadows. If it's literal, then this is a fantasy story. But it's not really clear. Even for a native speaker like me, it's not clear. 
there's something mysterious going on. Twenty-five mm percent -hmm. of your income is spent on these boxes of shadows. What do you spend twenty-five percent of your income on? I mean, I don't spend twenty-five percent of my income on on clothing. Uh, I, I can't think of even what. That's a lot of money. <laughs> maybe, maybe I spend twenty-five percent on I don't know transportation and and rent. No, maybe more than twenty-five percent, I guess. But what I'm saying is that's a pretty big amount of your money. That's like all of your. That's like more than your leisure spending. So people are spending more on this. Uh, they're spending twenty-five percent of this of their money on this. What happens if their money decreases? What happens if they make less money? Do they spend more or do they spend less on the shadow boxes? Based on the paragraph. Uh. You got to look at the end of the sentence. Take a look there. Here. Do uh. they spend more or do they spend less? Uh. Uh, more. They spend more. The more poor you are, uh -huh. the more you spend on these shadow boxes. Uh -huh. So does that remind you of anything else? Does that remind you of any other controversial thing in the world? Just out of curiosity. Yes, it's, uh, it's a little bit strange why uh, uh, they become uh, spend more money. Right. For that. Does that remind you of anything else? When people are poor, what do they spend more money on than when they're rich, statistically? Or, or at least we could imagine. The poorer you are, the people who have no money at all, <laughs> what do they spend their money on besides food, obviously? What do they spend their money on? Uh. This is for both of you. Alex, Victor, what do you think? Maybe spend money on uh, some uh, to have rest, to to have entertainment uh, yeah. time. Yeah, escape, right? Some kind of escape, some kind of entertainment, or what I was thinking of, drugs and alcohol, right? The less money you have, the more you drink, <laughs> even uh -huh. though you, even though you can't afford it because your life is terrible. So you have to escape from it. The shadow boxes sound like some kind of addiction because the poorer people are, the more they spend on the shadow boxes. Is that clear? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, how, uh, uh, However, I want, to uh, I, might, I want to make sure that I understand this correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, um, when we say shadow box, we, we mean... Um, that we uh, the poor people try to buy something. No, no, we mean literally a box of shadows. Okay. Like when you're standing out in the sun, you have a shadow behind you. Someone takes that and puts it in a box. <laughs> That's what it means. Nobody knows. There's no way to understand what what a shadow box is in the story. It's not possible to understand it. We can only speculate about what it means. But it sounds like it means an actual shadow, not it, like it's a like it's a metaphor. It sounds like oh. it's an actual shadow. That's my guess. Okay. <laughs> so this is a kind of a surreal story, like a Salvador Dali painting where the clocks are melting. Mm, abstract. Right? Yes, exactly. Sounds that way. There's also another. And there's also another term, shadow industry. The shadow industry also means any industry that is not regulated. Like the black market is a shadow industry. The black market. So, you know, like for example, or, or, or anything that's a little bit, anything that is shadowy is usually run by the mafia, right? It's shadowy. It's not clear. It's not out in the daylight. Something mysterious or secret about it. Okay, it doesn't have to be the mafia, it could be the government too. The NSA, National Security Agency, the ones that were revealed by Edward Snowden to be uh, spying on people, 
that's also a shadow industry because no one knows how it works. So people are suspicious about it, right? So all of those things can be shadow. Anything that isn't clear, that's secret, can be a shadow industry. So there's a double meaning. On one hand, it's something secret, something mysterious, maybe something we should be afraid of. On the other hand, it seems like this abstract metaphor for something that we don't really understand. Maybe, maybe it's like drugs, maybe it's like entertainment. But literally, it sounds like it's literally a box of shadows. <laughs> Weird, huh? Uh, I'll do this next paragraph and then we'll go back around the room. There are those who say that shadows are bad for people, promising an impossible happiness that can never be realized, and thus distracting from the very real beauties of nature and life. But there are others who argue that the shadows have always been with us in one form or another, and that packaged shadows, and that the packaged shadow is necessary for mental health in an advanced technological society. There is, however, research to indicate that the high suicide rate in advanced countries is connected with the popularity of shadow sales and that there is a direct statistical correlation between shadow sales and suicide rates. This has been explained by those who hold that the shadows are merely mirrors to the soul and that, man, and that the man who stares into a shadow box sees only himself and what beauty he finds there is his own beauty and what despair he experiences is born of the poverty of spirit. So, when you get a shadow box, what do you do with it, according to this paragraph? What do you do with it, guys? Remember that word we talked about earlier, Victor? Remember staring? Victor, are you there? What happened to Victor? <laughs> Alex, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Victor. Maybe he's on the phone. So what do you do when you get a box of shadows, according to this uh, paragraph? What, what do you do with it? Is that clear what happens? Um, not so clear. Um. OK, take a look here. Uh, look at this. The man, read, that, read this part again here. See it, Alex? Yes, yes. Um. Should I read, yes? Yeah, just read that sentence oh, again. Okay. Um, there are so, uh, those uh, who say that the shadows no, are no, bad no, no, for... No, just the sentence in blue. Just the sentence in blue. See it? The sentence in blue on the screen. Can you see the one I highlighted? Ah, uh -huh, okay, 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 sorry. Uh, I just uh, opened my page. Um, uh, that's the high, yes? No, that's the man who the stars. One, the one in blue, yeah. Uh huh. That's the man who stars into a, sh a shadow box. Uh, see, sees only himself, and what beauty uh, he finds. Uh, there is uh, his own beauty, and what despair he experiences, in born of poverty of his spirit. Right. So, what do you do when you get a shadow box? You open it up and do what, Alex? What does stare mean? Terror, um. Remember, because I was explaining this to Victor about the old women staring uh, at the it's smoke. Like, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's look. Uh, to look, yeah. yeah to so, look. You, so you open up the box and you just look inside. That's all you do. <laughs> and what happens when you look inside? Alex and Victor, what happens when you look inside? What do you see? According to some, what do you see? A beauty, uh, beauty uh, and... Uh, go ahead, Victor, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> some beauty, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you see yourself, basically. Yeah. And if you like yourself, you see beauty. And if you don't like yourself, you see despair. That's, that's, that's what you see. So the beauty is 
it seems like it's kind of like a mirror in some way. Mm -hmm. Looking into the shadow is like looking into, looking into the mirror and seeing your reflection. So that's, that's what some people say because it says this has been explained by those who hold. Hold means believe. In this case, hold means believe. This has been explained by those who hold that the shadows are merely mirrors to the soul. You know the expression? The eyes are the mirrors to the soul. Have you heard that expression before? No. So it, the idea is that if you look into someone's eyes, you can see how they feel. You can oh. see who they really are. You can see if they're lying or if they're telling the truth. So we have the expression in English, the eyes are the mirror to the soul. In this oh, story, yeah. in this in story, what, say again, sorry? Uh, in my language, we have a similar... Uh, Expression. Expression, yes. Okay. So in this story, the shadow box is the mirror to the soul. You look into the shadow box and you see yourself reflected, good or bad. <laughs> um, so to, why don't you take the beginning of part three, maybe this part in blue. Actually, no, do all of this here, and then we'll go back to Alex. Sorry, I can't highlight this very well. Okay. Wait, wait, one second, one second. Let me get that. And there we go. This part in blue, and then we'll go back to Alex for the second part. Mm -hmm. uh, I visited uh, my mother at uh, Christmas. She lives alone with her dogs in a poor part of town. Uh, knowing her uh, weaknesses for a shadow, I uh, broke uh, her several of the more expensive va uh, varieties which she uh, retired to examine uh, in the privacy of the shadow's room. She st stayed in the room for such a long time that I become worried and knocked off the door. She come came out almost immediately. When I saw her face, I know that shadows had not been good uh, once. I'm sorry, I said, uh, but uh, she kissed me quickly and began to tell me about uh, nightbirds who had won the lottery. Uh, I myself know only too well the disappointments of shadows boxes for I also have uh, weaknesses in that di uh, direction. For me it's, uh, it is something of a guilty, guilty. Se guilty secret, something that would not be a provide Approved. approved, approved of uh, by my clever friends. I saw G in. The oh, uh, this this is for Alex actually. Sorry, uh, that sentence is for Alex. So uh, he goes to see his mother, and, and and does it go well? Is anything strange when he goes to see his mother, Victor? Is that part clear? Uh, how, did, how did the visit go? Uh, I'm not sure that I understand all this uh, uh, example, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he, his mother uh, looked uh, strange. Exactly, she looks she looks strange. Yeah, she looks strange. So, what do you think she's been doing? Uh. uh if you had to guess, based on the story, based on everything we've read so far, what do you think she's been doing when he knocks on the door? What do you think he's been doing? What do you think she's been uh, doing? <laughs> she stayed uh, in her room for a long time. Doing what? Uh, think about section two of the story. Think about mm -hmm. part two. What happens when you stare into a shadow box? What happens? What do you see? Uh, he, he saw uh, himself, uh, herself. Exactly. 
So she's been in her room for a long time, staring into the shadow box. I think that's what she's been doing. Is that clear? Mm, yes. But why? Why she did it? Well, because it says that she has a weakness. In the beginning, she lives alone. She lives alone with yes. her dogs in a poor part of town, knowing her weakness for shadows. So she can't help it. Just like the poor people who spend more money on shadows than people who have more money. Right? Oh, yes. Right? So she lives alone and she's probably sad because she's a sad old woman. She lives alone. She doesn't have a husband anymore. And so all she has is the shadow boxes and she's weak. And he's got the same weakness. He says, I myself know the disappointment because I also have weaknesses in that direction. So, and, and do they speak about this experience? No. What does she do? Oh, that reminds me, Bob, the neighbor, won the lottery. She changes the subject rather than talk about what really happened. You know, just like people normally do. So rather than saying what's really going on, she just changes the subject. So there's something, the word is taboo. Do you know that word? Taboo? T-A-B-O-O? Yes. There's something taboo about shadow boxes. You can't really talk about them openly. Uh, Alex, let's pick it up here where it says, I saw Jay in the street. I saw Jay in the street. She teaches at the university. Oh, she said, no, the type wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Not, oh, aha. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, she said, uh, knowingly. 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 No. Uh, taping uh, the bulky parcel um, I had hidden under my coat. Uh, I know she will make capital of this discovery, a little piece of goss gossip uh, to use at the dinner parties she is so fond of. Yet I suspected that she too has a weakness uh, for shadows. She confessed, confessed, confessed. She confessed. Confessed as much to me some years ago during the strange uh, misunderstanding uh, she still likes to call our affair. Uh, it was uh, she who hinted uh, at the feeling. Hinted. Hinted um, at the feeling of emptiness. Uh, that awful despair that comes when one has failed to grasp the, sh the shadows. The shadow. Okay, so who do you think Jay is? We don't know the names, but everyone is very anonymous. Who do you think Jay is, Alex? If you had to guess, who do you think Jay is? Maybe it's just I mean, some... in relation to the narrator. Who... Uh, it is a pupil, yes, of uh, of my mother, yes. <laughs> Because this is, she teaches at the university. Yeah. Or, or maybe it's a Pupil. teacher. Pupil. Pupil? Pupil? Yeah. Uh -huh. Not a pupil, it's a teacher. Yeah, she's oh, a teacher. 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 And what do you think her relationship is to the narrator? Uh, is she a friend? Is she an enemy? Is she a sister? What is she? Uh, and, no, I, I think relationship it's not good because uh, she's trying to hide some um, some box maybe under my coat. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> he's got to hide it. And what does she say when she sees them? Aha! Like she's caught him doing something dirty. Aha! Caught you, right? Mm -hmm. That aha means oh, you can't get away with it. I see what you're doing. Well. If you're not sure about the relationship, read this part of the of this of the paragraph again. The part in blue. Do you see it? Uh, yes. Um, some years ago, during that strange misunderstanding, uh, she still likes to call our affair. Uh, what does it mean, our affair? Exactly. What does it mean? 
<laughs> That's the key. When you say you're having an affair with a member of the opposite sex, that means, what do you think it means? Want to guess? Well, actually, it doesn't have to be with a member of the opposite sex, but <laughs> I just assume that. Uh, it doesn't have to be. It means that probably he was cheating on his wife with that woman. Or, if he's not married, it means that he's having a relationship with her, a physical relationship with her, and that other people, that it's kind of secret, right? Because maybe they're colleagues at work, and it wouldn't look good if people knew about it, or something. Something, it sounds like they're having a physical relationship together, or they were, and it didn't go very well because it's a misunderstanding. Do you see what I'm saying? Does that make yes, sense? Yes. Yeah? yes, yes. Yes, yes. All right. So there's lots of, there's lots of meaning below the surface of the story. You have to sort of guess at it. Okay, we're almost finished the story. I'm going to, let me just see. I'm actually going to read the ending of the story. You follow along and then we'll discuss it. It's very short. Part four and five are just a paragraph. So here we go. My own father left home because of something he had seen in a box of shadows. It wasn't an expensive box either, quite the opposite. A little surprise my mother had bought with the money left over from her housekeeping. He opened it after dinner one Friday night. He was gone before I came down for breakfast on the Saturday. He left a note, which my mother only showed me very recently. My father was not good with words, and he had trouble communicating what he had seen. Quote, words cannot express it, what I feel because of the things I saw in a box of shadows you bought me. Last part. Part five. My own feelings about the shadows are ambivalent, to say the least. For here I have manufactured one more, elusive, unsatisfactory, hinting at greater beauties and more profound mysteries that exist somewhere before the beginning and somewhere after the end. Wow. <laughs> Listen to that again. My own feelings about shadows are ambivalent, to say the least. For here, shadows, for here, I have manufactured one more. Elusive, unsatisfactory, hinting at greater beauties and more profound mysteries that exist somewhere before the beginning and somewhere after the end. What do you think about, those, about the ending of the story? What do you think about it? It's pretty mysterious, don't you think? Let me get your reactions, Victor and Alex. What do you think about the ending of the story? Ask me questions if there are questions. Uh, uh, vocabulary question. Sure. Un unsatisfactory. What Unsatisfactory. So it's the un is the opposite. So it's the opposite of satisfied. You could oh, say yeah. dissatisfied. I feel dissatisfied, but the situation is unsatisfactory. So if you're talking about a situation, it's un. If you're talking about yourself, you'd have to say dissatisfied, not happy with things, not feeling like things are complete in some way. So the ending is a little strange, right? Yes. It's almost as if, in part five, the narrator has been looking at a shadow. <laughs> My feelings about shadows are ambivalent, to say the least, for here I have manufactured one more. Manufactured one more what? Created one more what? It sounds like he's created a shadow. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just a feeling that I get. Maybe he's just talking about some kind of doubt about shadows, but it sounds like in thinking about his feelings, he's almost created a new shadow in the box. And the box is, a, is something 
and and he describes how he feels uh, this feeling he has what is it that he's looking at how does he feel it's something that he can't quite reach he can't quite understand it's like hinting at something greater more profound but he can't quite get to it somewhere let me ask you a few discussion questions what for you is the most powerful sentence in each of the five sections, is there a particular sentence that stands out from the story, just out of curiosity? Or if, you, if, you, if that's difficult, you can reread the story on your own, and we can talk about it on Thursday, because we have another great short stories class. But is there anything that particular that stands out in the story, any particular words or sentences? What do you think, guys? Anything stands out in particular? Uh, I need to uh, reread the story Again, because uh, uh, I got common goal of the story, but uh, uh, I, sh I need to reread this again to understand it more clearly. Absolutely. So, so we can talk about it on Thursday. Um, but before we go, we've, we're running out of time. So ask me as many questions as you can about things that you don't understand because it will help if I can explain a few things and then you reread it and we'll do the discussion on Thursday in Thursday's great short story class okay so tell me what kind of questions do you have to help you understand the story what are some things that you want me to help you clarify No questions? Nothing? We are thinking uh, about it. <laughs> oh, but don't think. There's no time to think. Don't uh, think. Okay. Whatever questions come to your mind, just ask. We've well, only got I, three minutes. Uh, I have a question. Um, yeah. I didn't understand the last paragraph. Um, uh, I think uh, these uh, people, this mm -hmm. human, uh, don't like uh, this process, yes? And uh, um, uh, he has maybe some regrets about absolutely this. you're right yes yeah yeah because he says he's ambivalent shadows are ambivalent my own sorry no my feelings are ambivalent that means that he has some regrets yeah absolutely he's got good feelings and bad feelings about the shadows and and then the next part is a very strange sentence for here well, what does that mean here? It means probably when he thinks about shadows. That's what here means. For here, about this topic, shadows, about this topic, I have manufactured one more. One more what? One more feeling, I guess. It's not clear, even for me. There's something very mysterious about the about shadow boxes, and there's no way for us to know for sure what the author of the story really means. The purpose of it is that the story, in a way, is like the shadow box itself. We have to look inside and see what we can figure out. We can't really be sure just by, just by reading it. We've got to peer inside and go deeper. So it's not clear. We have to kind of figure it out on our own. Um, which image from the story is the most striking image for you? Because there's a lot of visual images in the story. What image do you think you'll remember the most? Actually, you know what? We can stop because I just saw the time right now. Actually, <laughs> I want to talk about this. Listen, can you both come back on Thursday so we can have the discussion? Is yes. That okay. Yes, okay. I can. I Alex, will. you too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Reread the story, save the link, reread it, look at the discussion questions, think about it, and we will talk on Thursday. We'll discuss the whole story, and uh, maybe I'll have some other things for you to read as well. But we'll spend a long time discussing, answering your questions and everything, okay? okay. Any other questions or comments, send me a message through Verbling, and I'll answer them there. I'll be back in just a minute for the business class, so stick around for that for the next hour for how to be on schedule. Bye for now, everyone. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you. Bye. Talk Thank to you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.